You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 10. And thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Daniel Sparkman in for John Huddleston. One of Tuscaloosa's newest landmarks is already receiving high honors. WVUA's Travis Lever has more on the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater's recognition in tonight's top story. It began in April when a large crowd saw the premier concert at the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater. Organizers say the first concert season was a big success, and major concert publication Polestar agrees. The Tuscaloosa Amphitheater is a finalist for best new major concert venue. Just being nominated, they're going to say, wow, what is this Tuscaloosa Amphitheater? And they're going to want to see who we are and what we are. And so just being nominated is a huge honor. There was one setback earlier in the concert year when the city decided to cancel a Sugarland concert following the April 15th tornado. City leaders faced tough criticisms after the costly decision. We dealt with quite a bit of I told you so's, you know, but then again, uh, thank the good Lord, you know, we had nothing but beautiful weather um, the rest of the season. And as you see now, I uh, have a chance to be recognized as the top new venue in the nation. Although the cancellation cost the city more than $200,000, the venue is proving to be a financial asset for the city. I believe it's unprecedented. Um, probably for any city to, to finish in the, in the plus. And apparently that's what's going to happen, has happened to us. And because of this nomination, Riggs says there are big things in store for the amphitheater's sophomore season. There's a couple of bands that I'm unbelievably excited about. We're just holding dates right now. We're starting to get booked, but it looks like we're going to have a better year than we did this year. Polestar will announce the winner of the award February in Los Angeles. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVUA News. The Tuscaloosa Amphitheater is facing fierce competition for the award. The venue is going up against other venues in Pittsburgh, Austin, and Orlando. The Tuscaloosa Regional Airport is looking to make some upgrades. The city of Tuscaloosa is asking for $15.1 million from the Federal Aviation Administration to do airport renovations. The money would go towards six different projects, including an extension to the runway, improvements to lights and signs around the airport, repaving one of the general aviation ramps and helicopter pad, terminal resurfacing and wildlife hazards assessment. Airport Director Wayne Cameron says the grant is part of a five-year plan, but is only wanting the money for 2012. In tonight's home team crime watch, two homicides in Tuscaloosa County over the weekend. First in Vance, where a shooting left one woman dead and now her husband is charged in connection with her death. According to Captain Lloyd Baker with the Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit, Matthew Whitman has been charged with reckless manslaughter in the death of his wife, Allison. Baker says the shooting doesn't appear to be intentional. According to Baker, it happened around 3 o'clock Sunday morning at the couple's home on Wallace Chapel Lane. Baker says Whiteman told authorities he was preparing for a pair of rifles for deer season when he accidentally shot his wife while she was laying in bed. Baker said he then changed his story. Whiteman said he aimed the weapon at his wife and fired it, but didn't realize it was loaded. Uh, all the elements were looked at last night with a district attorney and we were uh, looking at a reckless death charge. The elements did not apply or fit the, the murder charge, but they did fit the manslaughter. If evidence arises that shows that he did this maliciously or with intent, that the charges could change. And an up -to -date update to a story we first brought you last night where a murder suspect is still on the loose. According to Captain Baker, it happened around 1 o'clock Sunday morning in the Green Village Trailer Park. Baker says when investigators arrived on this scene, the body of 21-year-old Chastity Michelle Helton was found between two trailers. According to Baker, Helton was a prostitute but was unclear if she was working that night. He says witnesses saw Helton go behind a trailer with two individuals just before shots were heard. If you know anything about this case and would like to help, please call Crime Stoppers at 205-752-STOP or 205-752-7867. Continuing in tonight's crime watch, according to the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, 39-year-old Danny Joe Barger Jr. is charged with possession of burglary tools, marijuana, and a controlled substance. 
Authorities say it happened around 9.30 this morning at Edens Estates on Ken Seeley Drive. Officials say they were called because of a suspicious person in the area, and then officers found Barger with the tools and drugs. Over the past several months, the Rosedale community has been through a lot. The April 27th tornado destroyed a major portion of the community. WVUA's Bradley Whittington shows us the plans for the new Rosedale. The Rosedale community has been on 10th Avenue for 50 years. But after the April 27th tornado, parts of it are missing. But today, a sign of hope appeared for Rosedale residents. The start of phase one in rebuilding the community. According to the Tuscaloosa Housing Authority, plans to rebuild the Rosedale community were in the works three to four years before the April 27th tornado. But since the tornado destroyed a majority of the community, the rebuilding process sped up. Residents say since the April 27th tornado, the Rosedale community has not been the same. There's been a lot of you know, uh, trauma, drama, you know what I'm saying, you know, with, with the experience, with, their, I mean, with the tornado and stuff, what they have to go through, and all the way trying to get back and rebuild their life together and get up on their feet. You know, it, it's, it's been, been very hard, you know, especially in, in a, a, a poor neighborhood, poverty like this, you know, and that if they do rebuild this community, it will be a better place, the way I think, to you too. According to the Housing Authority, the first phase will include 88 houses. The Housing Authority plans to apply for Phase 2 in March of 2012, which will include 86 houses for a total of 174, 14 less than what they had before the tornado. Reporting from Tuscaloosa, Bradley Whittington, WVUA News. And according to the Housing Authority, the cost is expected to be around $13 million. And be sure to join WVUA Alabama's home team next week for a special presentation dedicated to everyone touched by the April 27th storms. Our hour-long presentation documentary, Faces of the Storm, will air at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, November 22nd. This special presentation is a look at the people impacted by the storm and their stories of loss, survival, and hope. Faces of the Storm will be brought to you commercial-free with special thanks to DCH and Nucor. Be sure to join us for the Faces of the Storm next Tuesday, November 22nd, only on Alabama's Home Team Station. And with a first look at Alabama's Home Team forecast, here's Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott. Richard. Hey Daniel, a couple showers happening on Home Team Interactive Radar tonight, mainly over East Tuscaloosa County, portions of Jefferson, Shelby County, points north. In fact, all the activity south of us tonight is pretty much fizzled out for now. More showers will likely develop, and it's very warm out. Upper 60s mainly across our state, 69 Tuscaloosa, 69 in Demopolis, mid 60s to the north, and upper 60s for Birmingham and clearer right now. For our bus stop forecast early tomorrow morning for our Tuesday, going to be a mild start. In fact, temperatures will likely rise a few degrees by early tomorrow morning. Some showers will likely be around. Some light rain early in the morning. Heavier stuff comes later in the day. How about the rest of that forecast and your weekend forecast? Home team weather is coming up. Stay with us. Thanks, Richard. In tonight's Home Team Education Watch, one Tuscaloosa County principal is being recognized on a national level for her work at her school. The National Association of Elementary School Principals named Maxwell Elementary's Connie Cooley as one of the 2011 National Distinguished Principals. Cooley is the first person from the Tuscaloosa County system to receive this honor and joins only 60 others across the country. Cooley was honored at a banquet in Washington, D.C. and presented with a bell to ring in honor of her students. The Tuscaloosa Board of Education recognized Cooley's achievements after 26 years with the district at tonight's board meeting. Cooley says she's honored to carry the title. Very humbled. Um, I'm, I consider this to be such an honor uh, to represent principals across our state. Um, certainly don't feel like I do anything more than what they do on a daily basis. And so, therefore, um, it just, it's great to be able to stand up and say, hey, elementary, elementary principals are great. The Tuscaloosa County Board of Education also appointed Reverend Schmidt Moore as their new president tonight. Moore replaces Dr. John Hinton as the county BOE president beginning at tonight's meeting. Vice President Gary Bonner will remain in his position as Moore assumes the presidency. A real-life Lady Liberty stopped by Alberta Elementary today to help them get excited about being a super citizen. 
She came as part of the Next Great Americans Tour program. It's designed to teach students about the Super Citizen program where they learn about our country's history and their role in our nation's future. The program donated one Super Citizen kit which includes lesson plans to get students started. To find out how you can help, go to our website, wvuatv.com, and click on Numbers and Links.